Welcome back into Good Parenting. I'm your host, Matt Bubala. Joining us right now is Maureen Lipinski, the author of the book, Not Ready for Mom Jeans. It's a novel. Now, the first novel, what was the title of the first novel? A Bump in the Road from Happy Hour to Baby Shower. Okay, so that's about a young woman getting pregnant. Correct. Moving from this young, carefree, sweet, swinging life to... Ikea lifestyle, yes. To now, <laughs> and you wrote that from the perspective of the mm -hmm. uh, not expectant person. But correct. then suddenly, the book comes out and you get pregnant une unexpectedly. Right, correct. I finished the book and I was in the middle of querying agents. And then I found out that I was unexpectedly pregnant. So I was living the life of my protagonist inadvertently. And so did you bring that to the publisher's meetings and say, hey, and here's the great twist. I, no, did. I did tell them. Um, and they were pretty excited about that and, you know, was not planned, but it turned out to be a great publicity tool. So is a lot of the money going into that child's now fun because you're really <laughs> profiting <laughs> off the children here? Right. Exactly. I'm not going to call you Kate. Right. Okay, but, Goslin, yes. Because at least you're uh -huh. writing the books while they were in the womb. They weren't actually, you know, slaving away at the right. typewriter. But Exactly. Well, no, actually, the book money goes more towards funding the things that my son destroys. Oh, really? So um, <laughs> our couch and our carpet and our windows and things like that. He's three, so there's been a lot of destruction. Well, so he's in now I'm a little bit past the three-year-old stage, and I, it's a blur, so I don't remember that well. Throwing things, breaking things, this is where we're at right now? Um. Yes, and also everything is mine. Um, you know, I, everything is communal property, but then it becomes, you know, mine in, in his mind, um, in public feels the need to constantly tell people, well, when he was two, I'm two as though they couldn't tell by him right. destroying everything, you know, <laughs> things, restaurants. So yeah, it's, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> now you revealed to me off there and I hope I can say this on that you are with second child. Yes, right I now. am. Yes. I've Toward... talked about it on my blog. Okay. All right. So knows. towards the end of the year, baby number two is going to come along. Yep. And how's the three-year-old going to react to this intruder? Oh, he's going to hate it. He's totally going to hate it. He has no idea what is going to happen to his world. It's going to be completely rocked. Does he know right now that the baby's coming? I mean, he just turned three, so his concept of reality is, you know, he probably thinks I'm having, I don't know, like Dora the Explorer, so, which he would be much more excited about. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, if he thinks that's what's coming, he's going to be right. vaguely disappointed, Yeah, I mean, he? he'd be happier if I gave birth to Thomas the Train. So, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to get that mental picture washed right, away. Right, yeah. <laughs> and now ask you about, so the book now, Not Ready for Mom Jeans, mm -hmm. were you writing this before you had the baby, or what actually, inspired you here? Actually, I started writing this when I was on maternity leave with my son. So there were six weeks that I just kind of fiercely spent writing. Um, my son was colicky, so it was my only escape. But what was mm. interesting was that um, I went back to edit it, and, you know, having no sleep and being on maternity leave, it was really interesting you could really tell the days when he wasn't sleeping i was like oh no this has to change <laughs> how funny mm -hmm. now uh the title not ready for mom jeans i mean you know that i don't remember hearing the term until those jessica simpson photos came out mm -hmm. a year or so ago mm -hmm. and then the everybody saying mom jeans all the time was that was that around the same time when you were writing this or was this um were you ahead of the curve on that or what happened there, there? was actually a saturday night live um Get. It was there was a commercial that was out a few years ago. That's right. That's um, right. With, with the mom all the girls, jeans. right? Yes, exactly. Um, it's hilarious. It's on YouTube. Yes. Um, and it's you know, they're the jeans that tell you that um, she, you're not a woman anymore. You're a mom. <laughs> you know, the high waisted, tapered at the ankle, yes. light colored, um, the most unattractive pants you could ever wear. Um, so that kind of first brought it to my consciousness. <laughs> Is that one of a, a woman's greatest fears coming? I mean, I know there's a million different things we're scared of, let alone the way our husbands are going to be everything. Right. But especially in our culture today, mm -hmm. when we see these celebrities have a baby and then three weeks later they're out in a bikini and yeah. in the Riviera, you know, showing right. off an incredible body right. that can only be gained through surgery, uh, personal dietitian and God knows what else they're doing. Anorexia. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and smoking as soon as the baby is born. Right. Is the baby out? Give me that cigarette. Right. <laughs> um, is that one of the biggest things that women deal with these days when they're pregnant? I think that it's part of it. I mean, it certainly doesn't help when, you know, every celebrity is on the cover of a magazine six weeks after they give birth and they're, you know, in a string bikini. Right. Um, so I think that's definitely present. I think that, you know, the we all live in reality and in the real world and, you know, we see that that's really not the case. But it certainly doesn't help, with, you know, with the pressure, with, you know, the biggest fear is, you know, driving the minivan and wearing the mom jeans and being, you know, the uncool parent. But then you kind of wake up one day and go, oh, my God, I, I am that person. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, so it sucks you in no matter how much you try to, you know, kind of rebel against it. It is tough. And, you know, that was the toughest thing for us is suddenly we're having triplets. So now yeah. we went from one child to four. 
the minivan's the only choice, unless you're going to really right. <laughs> spend a lot of money on a huge SUV, which you don't really want to right. do because it's bad for the environment, whatever else. But right. there was no choice. It was the minivan. And there it right. is, staring at you in the face. I know. And you just either accept it and move on <laughs> and just kind of hang your head and say, yeah, that's that's where we're at. It's a symbol of your uncoolness parked right in your driveway. <laughs> totally, totally. There is no two-door car in your life ever again. Oh, God, no. I mean, no, there's no way. We haven't graduated to the minivan quite yet. You know, we're just having the second one. Sure. But, uh, I mean, who knows? I'm sure that's in our future at some point. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's coming at you like a freight train right yeah. now. <laughs> Maureen Lipinski, the author of Not Ready for Mom Jeans, MaureenLipinski.com. We'll put a link up to that at goodparentingradio.com. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me.